give me a thumbs up in the main chat if you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up in the main spy only chat if you can hear me. We're, gonna, we're only going to stay here for 15 minutes. Thumbs up in the spy only room if you guys can hear me. All right, great. All right, great. All right, Q&A. Q&A. You should be able to unmute yourself or raise your hand. Use the raise hand feature. We'll keep it organized here. Uh, it's a recap. Today is 3-29-2022. We're going to recap some monster wins today. Um, if you were inside of the voice uh, channel today, or if you were inside of the Discord today, then you know that we absolutely crushed it today. Absolutely crushed it. Here's our results for the day. Nine of 10 trades, 100 percenters. I have more than 100 percenter, uh, but I this is the same position for SPX and uh, SPY, but 100 percenter, 80, 70, 60. Uh, our swings banked, excellent call outs, portfolio increased today by 20%. Um, man, you can clearly see entire Discord and more uh, green. Now, let's be fair. I'm sure somebody, I'm sure somebody was uh, red, but uh, for the most part, everybody was green. Happy about that. Monster wins. Even somebody even gave me a vote at a monster, uh, monster position there. So let's recap the day. Let's recap the day. You can post your questions inside of the spy only, or you can uh, raise your hand and unmute yourself. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll take questions right now to recap the day. We're only going to do this for 15 minutes and then we're going to get back to it. All right. If you're talking, I can't hear you. Rob, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Can anybody else unmute themselves? If you guys have a question. Katie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Could, could you go over your... Um stop loss i'm using the levels as a stop loss but sometimes the levels are like 60 to 70 cents apart so they're big stop losses that's absolutely a great point all right i got a video coming out today about distance base um uh, risk to reward it's going to help you guys understand the distance be behind um you know it's going to help you to understand how to gauge the distance and how close you need to drag your stop now let me ask you this rob are you saying that you keep getting stopped out or you don't really know where to put your stop loss at I don't have a clue where to put it. All right. No problem. No problem. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's do this then. Um, we took a lot of trades today. So let's go ahead and uh, let's recap. Uh, let's see here. Let's recap. How about we recap this trade here? We took this trade here. Yeah, we took this trade here. The trade started here at 459 at 81, but uh, most the call out, my entry, all that was right up in this area. All right. I drew some trend lines on here just to give you a good idea of what story volume tells. So this stop is not responding to these little squiggly lines or these, these trend lines here. No, the stock spy is responding to the volume and the volume, the, the influx of orders that's going to make the stock dance. And so that's what gets these pretty trend lines that you see. And I just drew these on here so that you guys can just clearly see. All right. That's all. Now, let's do this. Let's, I'm going to try to replay this. How about we do that? How about we, re we replay it and we start it maybe right here? How about that? All right. Let's replay it to there. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's pause. Okay. So there's their spy creeping up now. We're at a major weekly level. You see that, Rob? Yep. All right. That's where the move starts. So right away, I need to be thinking to myself, all right, I, I should expect something right here. Something. All right. Whether I break through with, with some force and then retrace and blow up or I reject. So I'm already looking at a level there. Now, don't pay attention to these trend lines. Remember, we, we haven't developed these trend lines just yet. All right. So let's go. Get a rejection. That's a solid rejection, right? Follow through. Do we have follow through? Yeah. All right. So you're thinking to yourself, I should get in a trade right here. But you may say, well, I want to make sure I'm coming down. You're waiting for the market to turn around or turn roll over rather. And you may want to break a trend in your mind. I know you trend traders. I know how you guys think that not you, Rob, but in general, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep coming down. Boom. Did you break your trend? Yeah. All right. You're dancing. Did you break and close underneath your trend? Yeah. All right. You did. 
This is an indication. Now, you're at a price level, and this means the move is about to start for the downside. If you didn't catch it here, this is the move, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this. I took this trade, and you guys know I entered right about here, somewhere in this area here above my price level. Why? I got all the confidence in the world that I am going to, at the very least, test this level again and drip down a little bit. Even if I take a short scalp down here, maybe like to 458, 26 or whatever, I know that I'm going to pop down a little bit, okay? Given the momentum, given the market direction, market sentiment, all the work we've done, I understand that I have a high probability. What's the probability? Of course, for those of you guys who have taken the training, you understand what I'm looking at, but let's just cover the basics. I mean, we have a directional sell-off. We came to a, a major level where we need to fill the gap. It's a probability we test this area and fill this gap again. Now, now of course, we know we didn't fill the full gap, but we did come down. So we, we, we're looking at that. We're watching it, right? Again, it's about 1148. There's a high probability, right? I pierced this level. I'm coming down a little bit more. I'll slide the stop loss down a little bit. Here's what we do, right? I'm in, I'm in my trade, dancing, break the level, beneath the level, I'm still dancing at my level. So I haven't engaged a stop loss yet at all. Once I break my level, now my stop loss is at my level or beneath. But here's what I do. There is something called distance-based risk to reward, right? So in this area, let's say this uh, from 458.60, to 458, we'll say 80, that 20 cent range, right? This is a good rule of thumb, not saying that it's always gonna be 20 cent, but just hear me out. I know that where this thing is chipping around at, I'll, I'll draw a little, uh, I'll draw a little uh, box here. I know that where this thing is chipping around at, right? In this zone, this is, this is where it's chipping at. This is my entry zone, we could call it. Got it so far? Yeah. All right. So. I know if I enter in this 20 cent spread, this 20 cent area, I would be, I would have a nice risk to reward, meaning I would only be risking uh, the pullback above this area. I have a high probability to break down. I'm good. So once I start breaking down, for me, about 20 cent or at volume levels, I start to move my stop loss. Here's what I mean. I'll come down here and let's gauge it again. So let's see, 60 all the way down to 40, all right, there, all right, there, all right? Let's blow it up a little bit so you guys can see it, all right? Make this clean. Okay, so 20 cent spread, about 20 cent spread here, right? Okay, mm -hmm. as I start coming down, this is just one way to drag your stop loss, all right? There's two things I'm looking at. I'm looking at the candles, right? I'm looking at my price, right? And I'm looking at volume. So. As I break down, remember, why am I breaking down? I'm breaking down because something in the market is telling me to hold. As I start to break down, I just simply start moving my stop loss according to the volume to the right here and the lack thereof or the increase, right? And it just so happens that it's lining up with about a 20 cent spread typically, right? Sometimes it can be more or less. That's not, that's not always the case. But typically, if I got in between my price level and the top of this little entry range, we'll call it, and that's, that, that range is about 20 cent or so, I typically am just dragging every 20, 20 cent or so, and it's lining up very nicely with how SPY likes to move. I've just been trading SPY for, for long enough to know that if I get into a move, I am good with, when, there's, when there's catalyst and momentum, I'm good for a three candle break on a three minute chart. I know it. I know it. It's, it's that's why I train people to trade spy, because it's there. There's some predictability here. There's some there's some calculation here that you can do very fast. So the first thing is, if I enter in this zone and I'm within a 20 cent range, I'm going to start sliding every 20 cent once I get the confirmation. Right. Same thing here. comes down a little bit more. I'm just just chipping away at it every 20 cent or so. There is about 20 right there. It's about 20. Boom. Coming down, let's keep going, let's see. And you guys heard me say it, I'm sliding my stop, sliding my stop. My ultimate profit target, I would love to go here, 
But because I understand where volume is, this is where I want it to come. I want it to blow by this area and I am putting my stop there. Now notice, as I come down, right? As I come down, so that was what? What was that, about 20? That's 58 even, see that? Can you, can you see here, can you get the idea? Idea, so this is uh, 58 even, 80, right? Would be about right, about there. Isn't that something? Isn't that mm -hmm. something? Each space here, each little zone is about 20 cent, right? That's not a that's not like a hard and fast rule, but on average, that's kind of, if I get a good entry and it's a, it's within 20 cent of my price level, that's kind of where I'm dragging. And I'm just checking volume. So okay. that's all I do. Drag it down. Once I'm coming down to this price level with with don't get me wrong, you have to pay attention to the candles. You could get wicked out. But if you do, it, so be it. You still mm -hmm. drug it down. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because I'm trading at and in the money. So, you know. Help me out, Rob, since you're, you're unmuted. What, what, what's the delta of an at and in the money contract? Uh, 45 that, to 50 usually. Say what? 45 to 50 sometimes. Yeah, and if I'm right there, first space in the money, right there at it, how much is it? 45, 48 cents yeah. usually. Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. So dot 50, dot 50. <laughs> this means for a dollar move, what's my profit? 50 bucks. 50%. Right. And likely as we chip more because of the gamma, it's going to increase a little bit more. Right. As I blow past that dollar. Would you agree? 100 percent. All right. What's the price right here? Uh, four, five, eight, six, oh. All right. What's 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 what did spy drip down to right here at his apex or at its bottom? Four, five, seven, six, four. All right. So is that about about oh, a buck? Yep. All right. All right. So all I really did was chop up a dollar into 20 cent movement. But I'm also just looking at volume. If I see some volume shift here and I know that their de shelf develops, I slide that stop right above the shelf because it'll okay. dance, but what pushes it down? Volume. And if you've gone through training, which I know you have, Rob, you understand volume. You understand what it really is, like what's behind all of this, right? Right. So I slide it. Let's play on. Let's keep going. Boom. See how I'm stopped out. I'm done because I slipped that stop to right there. I got this entire area to dance and this is a solid move. I got in up here. I got in up here, right? Before the move. Yep. Why? Because I understand, I can recognize where does this move start? So instead of being so afraid to take the risk here, what happens is new traders don't understand. They don't understand to how to read where the actual move starts. Because they're they're sometimes they're caught in a scalper mentality, and that's fine. Even with scalping, you need to understand where the moves start. But you have a, a a shorter distance, right? When you're trying to day trade and long hold, or just get the best move, because you guys love those hundred percenters and eighty percenters, and we got some today. Well, you're gonna have to understand where the move starts, and right. be quick on your and quick on your toes. And if you miss it, you need to be ready for the retracement or the midpoint or the next area where the move is going to start, which is here. And as we move down, you simply just give yourself the same distance of the zone that you entered, coupled with the volume here. You can clearly see there's divots in the volume. So it's letting you know, all right, uh, as we chip down, there's got to be something up here that's going to push this stock down. What is it? Once you learn how to read that, coupled with your price level, you'll be fine. You shouldn't get in a trade here and let that trade go all the way back to zero or negative. Never, right. never. This thing, you come in here, as soon as you come down to your next zone and you break and close, look, if I were to move this arrow all the way, look at how this candle stops right there at it. And I just did this on the fly with you. Can you see that? Yep. It's it's almost like it's almost like it's it's dividing itself up because of the movement and just the way spy is moving, right? So again. Mm -hmm. Not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes it's going to be a 15 cent spread. Sometimes it's going to be a 30 cent, you know, little zone or entry area. But whatever my risk area is, I simply divide that okay. over the next space. And I use volume to tell me. Now, if it doesn't line up, I, you know, you know, just pay attention to volume. That's it. Awesome. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Got another couple of minutes. Yeah, Katie, real quick on that. 
trade you're talking about. Why mm -hmm. didn't you buy calls instead? Why'd you buy puts? You bought above the level. Yep. You know, I would. So I expected a bounce right there, and I picked up a call just to test it out, and it was a failure. Yeah. Um, I got out of break even because it, it it bounced back in my favor a little bit, but oh, uh, obviously that was a bad that was a bad trade. So oh, I'm trying to Rocky. figure out why you bought above your level. <laughs> I want to tell you, Rocket, you bring me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rocket, I love it. And I, and it's excellent. You asked some great questions. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you a question, Rocket, and we're going to just talk about probabilities. Great question. We got about, I got training started in a couple of minutes. We're going to try to get this done in about two, three minutes with you and I. Okay. All right. Rocket, what is this right here? It's like a gap. All right. We gap up very strongly. You agree from yesterday? Yes, sir. All right. Sure. We start coming down in this area. What's the highest probability? When you see us through coming down in this area, what's the highest probability? We're well, going to fill the gap. Gonna fill it. Highest probability is right. Okay. Did we, did we fill a gap? No. We rejected, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just high probability. We come back down into this area. Rocket, what kind of candle is that? Call it a bullish and golf or a bearish and golfing. Game. So, so would you just say that's indicative of a, a nice aggressive move to the downside? It is, yes. All right. What's the likely, the highest probability? You got a clear rejection off of a major level. Check. Mm -hmm. We got some aggressive behavior. Check. We're coming back down to an area where we know we may need to retest or feel. Check. We're testing a major level here. Check. We already tested it once. Coming back again, we're chipping a rate around it twice, right? What's the probability we just drip down past this level a little bit? What's the probability? Just a little bit. And number four, did we break a trend here? Well, I, I, yes. So, I, so I, all, all I'm saying is it's indicative of a slight breakdown in the market. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. All four, there you go. So all four of those indicators say, we have a slight breakdown. Doesn't mean we won't run up for the day. That's not what it means, right? I thought we were going to run up here, right? And we reversed. The call out was made, exit. I held this sucker. Not a, not a smart thing to do for anyone else, but I did not believe, especially when we retested this thing and we didn't start keep coming down, I was prepared to hold the risk. But the point is, all of this tells me, all of all four things that we said that we that we just talked about tells me, at the very least, we are coming down into this zone, this area right here again. Go ahead, Rocket. No, I agree. It was a bad trade. I just. Uh, yeah, and that happens. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. This, and I know you guys, some of you guys may have talked. This was not a bad trade. That is not a bad trade right here. This, this aggressive move, let's just be clear aggressive move out the open nine times out of 10 do we get follow through on that kind of move yes nine times out of 10 we get we get you would got an extra in fact we did get a little extra pop here it just didn't you know go up far enough to take profit so this is not a bad trade why i had i broke above a major level i had catalyst to move up the volume supported we're, we're gonna right i'd like to see us reject somewhere above it well we got caught right there and you just play the downside. So in this example, no anticipatory trades. No anticipatory trades. I Where does this move start? Right there. Make sense? Great question. Next question. Anyone else? I'll take one more question. Recap from the day. I'll talk about a loser today. How about we go talk about a loser today? IWM, but a big, big win. All right, IWM, right? All right, so to your point, right? Again, here's IWM. The call out was made in the Discord around, uh, I don't know, one, one something. At this level, 209.50, that was my level, right? IWM puts, puts, what am I playing? I'm playing the overall direction, the move, the market, everything about this trade said, at the very least, I would drip down into this area here, right? at the very least, 
right? Volume, you can't see it now, but volume on the side supported that. This It didn't look like this. It supported that, okay, we got some, uh, if we keep coming down here, I just needed one close. Well, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Went into small profit and then immediately, you know, three minutes later, we see ourselves coming up, danced again at my level, didn't get it. I exited. The call out was made to exit right there, right there. Boom. So I exit, right? Right? Minimal loss. Nothing major. Nothing major. But as soon as we start to break and volume supports it, well, we're going into calls and this thing goes to the moon. So when you when the trade thesis changes on you, just get out and adjust. Just get out and adjust, right? A loss is not a major major deal. Just get out and adjust, all right? So this, this was the loss I took on IWM, but a lot of monster, monster wins on IWM today, right? So uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it happens. So that's an, an example of entering at my level, not getting the follow through, the thesis of the trade changing, and I needed to adjust. Get out, reassess, re-enter. Next question. Okay. If there are no more questions, or if you're not, let me see. Yes. I had a question. Um, how are you taking profits? Because I have a bad habit. You know, I'll go in with my full position size, and it's as soon as I see, you know, get the first little pop down, I'm already half out. And then it makes it where my runners aren't worth very much. All right. That is because, JP, you, you know, we love you, but I got to kick it with you like an uncle. OK, <laughs> this is because this is because you're used to scalping, JP. You're too nervous. Yeah. You're too nervous. <laughs> you need to chill, man. Just ease. Ease up. What like what? What? You ain't, you're not getting rich in one day. Just chill. Yeah, Just yeah. chill. You have to read the market. You got to read the market. All right. So when you take the you've taken training number three, market internals, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to get on you a little bit. I'm going to get on you privately. I ain't, ain't going to get on you right now. I'm going to get on you privately. <laughs> all right. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to have a stern talking with you. All right. It's because you got to let them you got to let your trade breathe and read the market and, and read the market as it adjusts. When the market adjusts, you just adjust. You're not going to be right every time but we have an overwhelming amount of winners in this discord would you agree with that oh yeah yeah Definitely. it's almost unfair so if that's the <laughs> case and, and, and keep in mind there are some other folks i'm not going to say any names there are some other folks who scalp more but now they're trying to hold a little longer for those you know longer wins and it actually works out in your behavior uh your, your benefit because all you're doing is dragging your stop loss all right but let me help you with this and then we got to wrap this up i got to get into some other training all right we'll take the exact same trade I know the trade starts here and it's coming down. I got some aggressive candle action here, right? I have a higher probability of it coming here, right? And I'm dragging my stop loss. I'm in profit. So I am playing this move that I'm playing. This is a continuation trade, all right? So for all of you guys who've been inside the advanced uh, training, number four, you know that there are tools I have in my tool bag that I can use. And one of them that I teach you guys it's just we play the continuation. It's not a breakout or a break. We're just playing the continuation because our level is so is 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 in an area where uh, if we break down further, we know that we have a high probability to come down into another volume level or a void or some kind of area where we can get a nice hard move for max profit. Look at this big candle right here. So you have to be okay with risk to reward. You have to be okay saying, I'm gonna risk. X amount of dollars. This means my account will go negative potentially X amount of dollars or this move, because I'm not looking at PL, this move will go in this area for X amount of minutes, time, dollars, doesn't matter. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And isn't it interesting? And I drew this on the fly. I drew this on the fly. Isn't it interesting where my entry point is? Right there. We got a doji. Is that interesting that buyers and sellers kind of uh, came to an agreement or, or some kind of in a tight range right there? So this, this tells me that this square right here is an excellent entry point for a move either direction, going down or up. It's a great entry because as you break down in this area until the move is done, you never look back. And as we break up in this area until the move is done, we never look back. Look at that. Once we leave this zone, 
you never touch it and you're gone. You have to be okay with that. And how you do that is you use volume and you use something called distance-based risk to reward. The based on the distance you have to the next price target, you simply chop that up in equal pieces. The, the, the equal amount below your price level is your risk zone. You're willing to allow it come down, whatever it is. See, I, I can't tell you, well, put a stop loss of 10% or 5% because it's, it's contract specific. I don't know what contract you're trading and I don't think you should be trading a zero DTE personally as a new trader. You shouldn't. But regardless of what you're trading, you have to understand in your mind, you have to say, this is my level, not my price. This is my level I'm willing to risk this trade on. And you adjust the contract to meet your price, your threshold, your risk to reward appetite. All right. You, sir, have to be just chill, just chill, but have a clear exit strategy in mind. I am not exiting until I hit this level or this threshold, and that's it. And you adjust your contracts to meet your you know, financial requirements of your, of your different uh, trades. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense, yeah. Because I actually took that trade, and I was already maybe three quarters of the way out on that first candle that dropped down. Right here? Right here? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you? Because you, 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 you try. I, I get it, though. I get it. Don't get me wrong. I get it. You, you, you get it. But I'm, I'm, I'm on a three minute. Come on now, man. I'm on a three minute chart. <laughs> the only thing lower is two and a one. And I'm not trading on a two and a one. It's just it, too much, too much for the heart. This is as low as it's going to get for me. So if I can't sit on my hands for three minutes and let this trade. Keep in mind, you, one of your major takeaways is. I think a takeaway for you would be entries, entries. I think if you got a, I think you'd still take profit too early, but if you got a better entry, I think that you would uh, be more prone to hold a little longer and you understood where to exit. And I think this is going to help you. I'll post the video later on YouTube. And by the time this is posted, I may even put a link. So if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link right here to the left somewhere or watch this video, um, you know, about distance based risk to reward and, and how it's going to help you. All right, guys, I got to shut it down right now. Monster, monster, monster win. If you're not in the Discord, if you heard it for the first time, you're hearing this for the first time, do yourself a favor, come into the Discord. And what I want you to do is I want you, after you get verified, you know, and, and you click the read the rules and all this stuff, I want you guys to go right there. Book testimonials. Go to testimony and read what folks are saying. All right, read, read what folks are saying about the training, about this Discord. Then please, please, please read, watch these videos, guys. I don't post every day until I got something to say that's going to help you. And I'm hoping that they're clear. Watch these videos. There's there's a jewel in each one of them. OK, after that, then you can get, you know, go over to one on one bookings and get some training that you need to crush it every day. All right. Just a little recap for the day. Three twenty nine, twenty two to help you guys answer some questions and uh, let's keep crushing it. I'll see you guys in the morning.